Hi and welcome to our Sensible Table View video tutorials. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you a Sensible Table View feature that has truly fascinated and inspired a lot of the people that have experienced it, even at its early development phases. And um, actually for the first time, many of our clients were so excited about it that they started using it while still in beta, a long time before it has been officially released. So what is it that's exciting people this much? Well, for the one thing, Core Data is a really cool tool. It enables you to create your object entities visually using um, uh, the Core Data modeler that comes with Xcode and which enables you to just work with their objects and forget about their persistence. Uh, Core Data will automatically persist your objects to SQLite or um, any other persistent store. And um, the only problem that had seemed to be with core data is that it's extremely complex to create user interfaces for core data. And um, this is where Sensible Table View fills the gap. And um, if you ask um, core, experienced core data developers, you'll find that extremely simple, inter, extremely simple applications are very, very involving um, code-wise. And um, actually, they would write hundreds of lines of code just to create a simple application with a, 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 a one or two detailed views, almost making it prohibitive to use by a lot of developers. Fortunately, Sensible Table View had, have changed all this. Let's have a look. So what I've done here is I've created a normal navigation application from the, X, from the Xcode template, but I've selected Use Core Data for Storage, and um, uh, this is the template that I've been generated. Uh, the only thing I've done is that I've added the sensible table view files to this to this template and um, modified the title and um, the style of the table view. Now um, I've I've still haven't done anything to the template actually, so um, let's run and see what 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 comes right out of the box by uh, with Apple's template. Now this application is a basic table view where uh, if you click the add button you will be presented by uh, different cells that represent the certain the, the, the actual timestamp that have occurred when you've tapped the add button and uh, the only thing you can do with these is actually just edit them and uh, uh, remove certain uh, timestamps from the list other than that uh, they're completely static and you'll have to, to define your own detail views in order to be able to do any modifications to these. So let me go back um, to Xcode and see what will happen when we add Sensible Table View to all this. Um, uh, I'll first have a look at the uh, model that comes with the template. So it's basically just uh, one entity called event and uh, this one entity has just one attribute called timestamp and it has a type of um, date and uh, if I go back to code the implementation file I'll see a, already a tremendous amount of code just to do this simple functionality so let's see what um, sensible table view is gonna do for us uh, first of all I'll go to the header file and uh, remove the fetch results control delegate, I do not need that. I'll also remove the fetch results controller, I do not need that. And I'll now add the sensible table view model. Now going back to the implementation file, I'll just remove the private function, I don't need that. Remove the fetch results controller, synthesize, and in true spirit of sensible table view, I'll actually remove almost all the code that exists here. Now that's it, that's all I need. I'll remove this and add. And let me create an instance of the model. So 
So up till now, those of you who have watched the intro video will see very little difference between what we've done here and what we've done in, in the basic uh, object binding applications or key binding applications. And we will actually continue in the same fashion. So uh, as with key binding, as with object binding applications, I will start by adding the class definition for the event entity uh, in the um, core data model. So let's see that. I'll just paste the code here. So that's it. Uh, I'm creating an event definition uh, with entity name event and uh, given the managed object context. And I'm informing the class definition to auto-generate the, pro the pro property definitions for me. Um, again, I'll go back here and I'll paste the code for the uh, section. It's an array of object section, a gold, good old array of object section that we know and we've got used to in the object binding. Um, and what we see here is that this time it's given an entity class definition of event definition. I'm wiring the add button to the object section and I'm finally adding the section to the table model. Let's see what this has done for us. Okay, so these are the timestamps that we've added before. And notice that we now can start editing these timestamps. So I'll just go here and change the date, for example. And uh, it has been changed. And I can even start by adding new timestamps. And notice that this time I get to choose the actual timestamp, the actual value of the timestamp that I'm interested in. And just done. And uh, here it is added. Uh, as usual, I can just remove any timestamp I want. So um, automatically, I've, I've already had a lot of flexibility. But um, this is a very simple application. So let's see uh, how Sensible Table View handles more complex applications. So I'll go back. And uh, uh, I will try to create the same application that we've created using object binding in the introductory video. So I'll go to the object model, data model, and uh, let me just uh, remove this entity and I'll quickly create a task entity. Okay, so now we have several uh, uh, attributes for the task entity. They're basically the same uh, properties that we've created before in object binding. And um, I'll just do a couple of modifications here. I need name to be a required property. So I'll uncheck that. And um, let me just set uh, a default value for the active property. So let's set that to yes. And let's save this and go back to our code. So we're going to follow the same model. We're just going to create a class definition for the task entity. And uh, let me again paste the code for that. So the definition is still as simple, although it has several uh, more properties that need to be defined, like uh, description. I'm changing the title to, to full description and the type to te a text view. Uh, priority, I'm changing uh, the type to a segmented with uh, low, medium, and high values. Uh, category, I'm changing the type to a selection with homework and other uh, selections. And uh, I'll just need to change this from event uh, definition to actually task definition. And uh, before I run, I, I just want to go back um, 
to my simulator and I will actually re remove the application otherwise since the model have changed uh, it will raise the core data will raise an exception that the model the persistent model store have changed I could have also uh, uh, made another version of my data model but I'll just uh, delete the application okay so now when I tap the app button I'll have my new task entity with all of its properties and notice that the done button is disabled since I specified that the name property is a required property so let me just start by task A and um, if we notice uh, the other properties uh, active is by default on uh, let's say let's set some priority and let's set some category and let's save all this and it's added with everything saved let's add another task and so on and um, experienced core data developers know exactly how much time this have saved but yet we have something uh, that's even more uh, complicated and uh, it shows it, it truly shows how sensible table view saves a lot of time which is relationships so let's have a look at relationships let me go back to the model I'll now uh, quickly create another entity called task steps where task step where each task has a, a, a certain number of steps so let me quickly create that so a task step is just a name and a description and now I'll quickly create a relationship between uh, task entity to task step entity and it will be a one-to-many relationship so now it's a mutual relationship task step entity one to many and it's inverse task of course the inverse relationship is optional but it's highly recommended by Apple that you define uh, um, an inverse relationship so that's it I'll just save here and um, I'll now just paste the class definition for the task step again I'm defining here a class definition for task step entity and um, I'm specifying the attributes here, name and description, and I'm just modifying the title of the description and the type to text view. Now in the task entity definition, I'll just add the task steps here. And similarly, paste the property definition for task steps. And um, I need this to specify, to tell uh, the task definition to use to actually use the task steps definition when it uh, uh, renders the UI for task steps. So um, that's it. Task step def uh, allow adding items, allow deleting items, and I'm not allow uh, I'm disallowing moving items here. And uh, before we do anything, let's just remove the application here because again the model have changed. And let's run. Okay, let's add the task now. And um, notice now that we have a task steps relationship. So let me tap here. And now I can add several tasks. Steps. So step one. Step two. Etc. 
So now I have two task steps. Then go here, check the steps. And every uh, uh, thing have been generated for me, several detail views, all automatically, and um, all this with just one single page of code. I personally find this magical. Thank you very much for joining me today. We've just covered the, covered the tip of the iceberg, and I hope uh, you enjoy uh, creating very complex applications with sensible table view uh, core data integration. Thank you very much and goodbye.